Hi everybody and uh, hope everybody's having a good day. Um, so yeah, so today we'll go over layered ISC, which is, uh, as David said, is our multifunction solutions at the system and board level. Uh, and we'll get into exactly uh, what that is. Um, but the, the basic premise is Laird has um, a vast portfolio of um, products and solutions we have through um, EMI mitigation, um, shielding, absorbing, as well as uh, thermal products. And now as, you know, fights are getting more complicated, uh, Laird is moving into uh, the nexus of all those um, solutions and creating uh, combined uh, answers to problems that, that everyone's having in the industry today. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, ISC, what does it stand for? Integrated Solutions Engineered. So it, it's, a, it's a holistic uh, look and approach at tackling uh, the problems that we're seeing in the market uh, in, the, in the different industries uh, today. Why, why is this happening, right? Um, well, as you know, devices are getting uh, more powerful, having to transform data at higher rates, um, just in, in general becoming more complex uh, and putting them in smaller packages, you're seeing uh, additional challenges with heating, um, you know, regulatory compliance with um, EMI noise, um, you know, uh, antenna uh, desensing. So you're seeing a whole array of problems that are coming up that either weren't there in, 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 um, in previous days or, or, or just getting more and more difficult to tackle uh, in the future. And uh, as a result, you know, you're, you're losing space within your device um, or your product to solve these issues. And, you know, where does that lead you? Well, it'd be great if you could combine some of your um, solutions that, to the individual problems into one, one item that can tackle multiple things and save uh, board space, device space, uh, enclosure space, um, which, is, which is valuable to everybody. And that's, that's what's really leading us to um, this move in a multifunction solution direction. And to encompass that, uh, Laird has um, sort of bucketized um, the, the different solutions that we have uh, within the ISC uh, product group. Um, so you have metalized, hybridized, structurized, and textilized. Right. So under under metalized, this you can think of this as uh, having a um, die cast uh, stamped or deep drawn uh, metal basis uh, to which uh, Laird adds uh, our other solutions within the um, EMI absorbing um, so soft EMI sh shielding and grounding products, as well as uh, thermal products. Uh, Hybridize is more into a little bit more material science where we're taking different, um, using material science to create one solution that has, that serves multiple functions within, within devices. Um, Structurize is using uh, material science uh, that we have in, in the R&D department to then create uh, new materials uh, that um, are, are serving a structural function uh, as well as you know, tackling um, EMI and, and thermal related issues. And, and, and Textilize is, uh, so we have a basis of uh, smart fabrics and then the applications of those smart fabrics and how they can get used in, in devices. And we'll go through each of these individually and go through the different uh, products that I have within them. Uh, as well as uh, finally, what our R&D roadmap is for 2020 and what's what's on the horizon. So within Metalize, um, the first kind of category we have is heat sinks, uh, and you know here we're showing one application of that, and that is you know taking diecast uh, heat sinks, but then uh, adding uh, additional value-added uh, services and products that we have to them, right? So. Uh, in, in this case, you have um, a heat sink, but you know you see we have uh, thermal material pre-placed on it and an FIP um, gasket placed around the outside um, so that you have your thermal and EMI sealing all together in one package. And Laird is uh, able to offer this as one, one product, one um, uh, component to ship all together as an assembly um, to you know, the contract manufacturers that, that are gonna be assembling this. Um, so it's kind of a one-stop shop to get all these items together instead of discreetly 
uh, having to source each one individually. And you know, with this, we could also apply um, any of the different uh, layered products that we have. Uh, in this case, we're just showing very popular, which is uh, thermal thermal pads and FIP. We could also do thermal dispensing, um, FOF, S, um, fabric or foam gaskets, SMD contacts. Um, so a whole plethora of different um, options that you could add on to you know your basis of the the diecast heat sink. Similarly, um, the next one is, is Cool Shield, which is which is our integration of uh, thermal solutions into uh, board level shields uh, and the uh, and the covers for board level shields. Um, so we are able to pre integrate and pre apply uh, thermal materials as well as uh, uh, diecast heat sinks uh, and, and um, different uh, cooling methods, whether whether it's uh, graphite sheets over the top. Uh, all, all products within layered that we can combine with a board level shield covers the ship as one unit so that when it gets to uh, your assembly step, you can just place it down and you don't have to then do a bunch of sub assembly steps before uh, placing it onto the frame. Um, you know, we, we are able to also put in features so that uh, you don't need, uh, so your heatsink integrates into the board level shield cover, right? So that you don't need extra features uh, on your board. Um, to to hold the heat sink in place uh it can just be functioned directly as the board level shield already already does right so no additional features need to be added and you could integrate a uh, heat sink directly into uh your cover and uh in the next slide here you can see uh, so we had a customer uh that was that was that had an iot device and and previously they didn't need um they didn't need board level shielding they didn't they didn't need uh thermal solutions because it was it was pretty it was it was it was low powered right um but as the device has gotten more complicated uh had to do more functions more processing you know they, they've had to you know now they're getting emi noise issues uh at the same time it's getting hot and uh you know uh, they need they need a thermal solution to keep keep, keep their ic cool so uh, in, in this case, we were able to do the thermal modeling as well as the EMI modeling uh, to design uh, the board level shield that'll work for them, but also design the heat sink that would be required and, and model for them the, you know, the additional cooling and, and temperature reduction that they would get uh, through its usage. And we're able to do a full complete design uh, to solve both their EMI and thermal problems together um, and provide it as, as, as one solution um, so that they don't have to modify the process uh, very much at all. They have a frame, and then uh, they're able to drop on the cover. And that, and from the from the assembly side, that's that's all you need to do. The we have locking features on the frame so that everything holds together and doesn't uh, you know fall apart or, or pop off during during drop testing and, and the different uh, testing that they had to go through to make sure that this is robust. Um, so you know where where is you know, we, we see this happening uh, across, the, you know, a bunch of different industries, but particularly in IoT devices, you know, home mesh routers, smart vacuums, smart home speakers, they're, they're doing more and having to uh, provide additional benefits to the end, the end user, right? So as a result, processing power has gone up and they're needing more um, shielding, they're needing more uh, thermal solutions, and they're also getting put into more complex packaging with not as much room to do all of that. So this is a kind of a neat uh, combination of what Laird offers into a holistic solution. Um, similarly, we had an uh, automotive customer. Um, they had a connector on um, one of the the, um, the processing units within within the the car. Uh, but they were getting uh, noise. Their, their frequencies that they're having to deal with due to higher data transfer rates and, and uh, you know more information going through the different sensors within the car. Um, their their um, the frequency of the noise that they're seeing has gone up, and as a result, they previously had a connector that was using spring fingers uh, to do the shielding, but it was to get the gaps uh, are getting too large, right? So we were able to uh, combine. Uh, the connector shielding that uh, they had had with our SMD gaskets in order to um, move up that shielding effectiveness 
uh, at, uh, you know, into the, the 10 gigahertz level where you're, you're getting good shielding um, for the device at a higher level. And we're able to, since we, you know, we make all these parts, we can combine them together into, into one solution and be a one-stop shop to uh, improve the shielding. And, and finally, we have uh, shield sorb. So this is, again, this is the combination of your board level shielding with absorbers, right? So as um, many devices today uh, in different markets, we're seeing that you're getting higher frequency noise. Uh, once you start getting above, uh, you know, 10 gigahertz, now your shielding effectiveness is dropping dramatically uh, with traditional board level shielding. And um, the addition of an absorber within your board level shielding can greatly uh, raise your shielding effectiveness uh, as you as you get into those higher frequencies. And so more and more we're seeing customers uh, designing in absorbers from the start uh, instead of it being sort of a band-aid solution that it kind of has traditionally been. Um, so designing in absorbers to begin with, uh, and then in, in, you know we we make absorbers, we make board level shielding, so it only makes sense to um, offer them together with it as one cover that we can ship. Uh, and becomes an invisible solution um, fr from the CM side. So that that was more of a, you know our metals business combined with um, value add from our other product lines, right? And uh, now as we get into hybridized, this is more of um, our material science and R and D and our R and D working on uh, solutions that are um, New, I mean, uh, not not just a combination of materials, but also uh, directly targeted new multifunction um, items, right? Um, so the the one that's been around uh, for for a couple of years now and has really started to see a, a lot of traction within within different industries, particularly in uh, telecom, datacom, uh, is Coolzorb. So Coolzorb is the combination of an EMI absorber and a thermal material into one pad. So this is uh, in terms of feel and um, you know, uh, how it applies and how it functions, it's very much the same as a thermal gap pad. Um, you know, if you saw it, you would think it was just a, you know, a regular uh, tin material um, that, that you would place in your system. But with, within that tin material, we have included um, EMI absorber fillers um, so that it serves the function of both uh, thermal transfer and EMI absorbing. And, uh, you know, where, where might you use this? Why do you need this? Um, just as we mentioned before, uh, that, uh, you know, as you're getting, you know, 10 gigahertz and above, you're, shielding, you're seeing your shielding effectiveness drop off with traditional board level shielding. Um, you know, under those, the shields you often have, you're also often using a thermal material, right? Um, now you can just simply swap out your thermal material for a cool zorb pad. And now you're getting that uh, EMI attenuation um, at the higher frequencies, as well as your thermal transfer in one, and you don't have to try and squeeze an absorber and a thermal material within your device, you can have them in one. Um, also, we, we, we have seen applications, um, particularly in uh, commercial routers, where um, you know, you're getting more noise than you previously had, right? But they, they hadn't been spinning their boards with board level shielding because they didn't necessarily need them. So they are able to, uh, while absorbers work better at higher frequencies, uh, at the lower frequencies when you re you're in the, you know, say five gigahertz uh, in, in the Wi-Fi ranges, right? You can get a couple dB um, drop in your EMI noise by, you know, replacing a, a thermal gap pad with, with Coolzorb. So if that is just a little bit of benefit that you need, um, to get under for regulatory or, or get under and, and solve some uh, antenna desense issues, um, you can swap out a thermal gap pad uh, for Coolzorb to get uh, a small benefit. I'm you know, not saying that you're gonna get, you can replace board level shielding um, uh, at, at the lower frequencies. That's, that's not how generally absorbers work, but if you, but if you just have a small noise that, you, that as these chips have gotten just slightly more powerful than they had been, or it was unexpected, that is definitely a solution that you can use it for. Um, within the Coolzorb family, um, just as a quick frequency selection guide to know what, what to look for, um, if you're under two gigahertz, Coolzorb 600 is your best bet. 
um, between two and 20 gigahertz. Um, we have CoolZorb uh, 200 and 600 uh, and um, at 20 plus gigahertz, CoolZorb 600 or CoolZorb 500 are your best bets. And if your components are very sensitive to, uh, to pressure, we do have a high deflection version of CoolZorb 500, uh, which will give you, you know, for, for low, low uh, pressure, you'll get high deflection. Um, let me go on to the next slide. Um, this is basically going over what I was talking about before, where, uh, you know, as, as, you're get, as you're getting to 10 gigahertz and above, your shielding effectiveness just starts to just drop off because of all the gaps. Even, even castellations are now causing you problems. Um, any little hole that you have uh, in, in your metal uh, enclosure here or, or shielding is, is, is going to leak, right? And so by the, the inclusion of an absorber or in this case, uh, cool absorb, you know, you can up your shielding effectiveness to make your current shielding work much better as you get into the higher frequency ranges and have to deal with uh, higher frequency problems. And um, this wasn't as common in the market or, or a lot of industries uh, previously, but now, um, you know, even, even capacitors are, are creating a lot more noise uh, than they've had previously. A lot of components are, are, are having to function higher um, or giving off higher frequency noise, especially with higher data transfer rates uh, in a lot of devices. And so you're really seeing um, the need for this. So just a quick overview of what different CoolZorb options there are. Um, so CoolZorb um, 400 and 200 are at two watts per meter K. Uh, CoolZorb 600 is three watts per meter K. Uh, CoolZorb 500 is four watts per meter K. And on uh, our roadmap that we have coming out this year, we have a dispensable CoolZorb, uh, which will be three watts per meter K. And we have um, got a very new, exciting product um, that we can sample now that is coming out is CoolZorb Ultra, which is a 12 watts per meter K pad uh, that also does EMI absorbing. Uh, and we've, we've seen a lot of interest in this in uh, the optical module world, um, as well as telecom datacom, where they're, you know, you're having these with 5G, you're getting higher data transfer rates and um, you're really seeing a lot more noise. So looking at the attenuation graphs, um, uh, the, the easy way to think about it is the selection guide um, that I showed on the previous page. Uh, but you can see at the lower frequencies, uh, cools are 600, 200 is your best bet. Um, as you as you rise up, uh, cools are 600 and 400 has has its um, kind of heyday. And then as you get into the to the higher frequencies, uh, you know anything above 100 dB per centimeter is, is really good. So uh, that's where cools are 500 and uh, 600 kind of come in. So you got to kind of look at what is your what is your thermal need right um, for for your your situation, and then um, is is cools are going to work in terms of attenuation. And uh, the attenuation graphs that we give are you know kind of a perfect situation. Um, so as with as with any absorber, it's it's best to put it in your system. Uh, test it out and, and and see what kind of uh, benefit that it's able to give you because there are um, we we offer uh, EMI modeling so we can model your system to determine um, from from a from a simulation standpoint what kind of benefit you would get from from an absorber uh, but also it's always it's always good to test um, and so we, we we all these materials are able for available for sample uh, and you can um, put them in your system play around and, and see if they work for you. Um, this is just highlighting, you know, we've seen in the optical module world, you see the base frequencies as, as these data rates are going up, they're getting into that 10 plus gigahertz range where, you know, traditional shielding uh, and options that you have are not, are not going to cut it anymore. Um, you know, you're, you're getting leakage to any little hole that you have within that, uh, that uh, the casing or, or, or the board level shielding that you have. Uh, and that's where absorbers really start to come in and shine. And, and why, especially in, in very tight packages, uh, such as the optical module, where you're seeing CoolZorb become uh, very popular, uh, simply because you, know, you, you don't have the room to put uh, an absorber and a thermal material in there. You're really looking at um, trying to combine that, do it in one space and, and use, use you, know, you already put in room for a thermal material why not have it serve two functions and and solve your EMI issues at the same time? So KZorb is um, this is a little spin on uh, traditional absorbers. Um, so what what was found 
um, is that when you put an absorber directly onto your PCB, it can cause uh, signal, uh, signal issues through your traces if that absorber is directly on your PCB. Um, if, if you include a dielectric layer in between that absorber and the PCB, uh, you remove that issue. Um, and so now your traces and the signal integrity is, is not affected uh, and you're, you're also getting the EMI benefit of the absorber. Uh, and and that's, that's really the basis behind uh, our KZEB product line. Um, and so what we've seen as a very effective use uh, of this is a picture frame. So you can see here um, with, a, with a cutout center that basically does a picture frame around your IC because you're getting a lot of noise um, from all the, um, all the traces and, and the connections here on the, on the side of the IC. Um, and so you can get a lot of benefit by putting an absorber around the outside. Um, and you can also, uh, you know, belt and sus suspender it. And, and you know, we, we offer CoolZorb too. So you could put a picture frame absorber all around your IC uh, and then as well put uh, CoolZorb on top. And now you have uh, absorbers completely surrounding uh, whatever noisy IC that you had, uh, giving, giving you real good benefit all, all the way around. And uh, so KZORB, um, we, we can use any of the absorbers that are within um, Laird's product uh, portfolio, the, the elastomeric type. So all the sheet elastomeric absorbers that we have, uh, we, can, we can combine this solution for any of those. So whether it be MCS, GDS, uh, MMI, um, we, can, we can combine all of those together with the, the dielectric layer on, on the bottom. And the dielectric layer is not, it, it's not, um, there's no adhesive attaching them. They are, um, they are coal rolled together. So when, once you, uh, if you see the material, handle it. It's 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 one material. Uh, it just it has discrete layers within it, and so you you can get that uh, sort of dielectric um, uh, gap between your your board and the absorber. The new product that um, it was just released uh, at the end of last year. Um, and um, maybe not, you know, everybody has seen or, or heard of it. I, I know as I've gone and talked to people, they say, oh, that's new. I, I hadn't heard about that, um, which, is, which is graphite or foam. And so uh, graphite or foam is a thermal gasket. So the, the basis behind this is um, it, it, it's, a, it's a repeatable, it's, it's, it, if you, in terms of feel and handling, it'll, it'll feel very much like uh, fabric over foam. So um, just a squishable, compressible gasket, right? But the, the function of it is not um, grounding uh, the, 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 for a graphite from 1,000 and 2,000, the, the benefit you get is thermal transfer, right? So you, this, um, and, and we'll, we'll see in the next slide, uh, you know, the, the level of thermal transfer you can get, but it's, as you get into larger gaps, um, you can get very high thermal transfer over large gaps uh, with with the use of graphite or foam, uh, not only that, um, there there's no there's no problem. There's no silicone bleed. There's no issue of that at all. Um, it works great over large gaps, and it's repeatably compressible, uh, and it, very low very low pressure. Uh, as well as if you have any relative motion uh, between two devices, so it, uh, or two components, uh, say an insertion that has to happen, um, you can have repeatable. Um, uh, thermal transfer connection uh, between those two devices because the, the graphite or foam can, can survive shear. Uh, we've done testing with it um, through, you know, 5,000 plus insertions without any um, uh, degradation in, in the thermal transfer. So uh, if you have shearing or relative motion between two components, uh, you know, your traditional thermal gap pad would, uh, would shear or pull or, you know, it's, it's kind of like a goo, right? So it would, it would come apart, um, whereas graphite or foam uh, survives. We, we do have a, another uh, version of graphite or foam, which is the, the 3000 version, which is also, as you see here in the bottom picture, uh, uh, includes a, um, an electrically conductive layer. So now you have um, uh, a thermal transfer and grounding uh, all in one. And so you're able to, um, if you have fabric or foam in your system today, but you need to get thermal out, um, you can, uh, and it works better if you start from the from fresh, right? You can design a thermal path through where you would normally have had fabric over foam previously, uh, and so you can get your grounding and thermal transfer in in one component. Um, and 
saving yourself uh, space and, and and hopefully you know getting through some limitations you might have had previously. Um, you can see the next slide. Uh, as I said, uh, it's, it's not you know graphite foam is not a homogeneous material, right? So your 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 thermal path is through the graphite on the outside uh, of this gasket, and so um, you know as you get taller. Um, because you know you're you're going through the graphite, and the graphite on the sides of the material is your, your heat is going through the xy plane of the graphite, which is the 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 really excellent uh, heat transfer direction of graphite, right? So as your gap size gets bigger, your 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 thermal conductivity gets much better, and so you know once the the sweet spot uh, for graphite or foam is at, say two millimeters and above. So if you if you start getting uh, two millimeters above, you start getting four all the way up to you know uh, ten and a half watts per meter K uh, through graphite or foam. And for graphite or foam, three thousand. Here's a we we did uh, we have shielding effect from this testing. Uh, so you 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 can get really good shielding uh, with graphite or foam three thousand uh, through through the frequency ranges. Uh, one thing I just want to mention, we, you even with these numbers here, we can double up the wrap of graphite that's in graphite foam, and you'll get a 20% benefit above uh, what you see here. So, uh, and the the other nice benefit is that um, you can do multiple uh, rows of graphite or foam, which then gives you multiple thermal paths uh, in your same um, you know uh, rectangle or or square that you you want to do your thermal transfer through, um, and you know as to each row that you add in. It um, you know it re reduces the, the 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 thermal resistance that you have right so um, you know if if you have um, instead of making one large pad if you did two you 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 drop your your thermal resistance in half right so you're kind of putting um, parallel paths to, to go through instead of just uh, through one. Cool shield flex. So this is the combination of um, using a metal foil as your cover for a board level shield um, and we are able to automate and pre-assemble uh, thermal materials onto that to that foil um, top and bottom so that um, you can treat it very much like uh, like a cover uh, place it down and you have your thermal already in place uh, on your copper foils and where we've kind of seen the use case for this is in very height constrained devices where you know you're needing very low height uh, board level shield frames, and you don't really have a lot of room uh, for covers, and and every you know fraction of a millimeter uh, is is very important. And uh, so on these these height constrained and low and low low shield height uh, devices, you can use um, uh, uh, cool shield flex in order to put a cover on your frame um, that that doesn't add a lot of height on top of it. And also the, the nice benefit of that is it allows you to get your the top of your IC uh, a lot closer to the top of the frame because um, the foil, metal foil, it um, it's a lot more forgiving uh, to to your stack up tolerances, right? So you can tent uh, sort of tent pole um, over top of your IC with the frame um, with with a foil versus you you to some extent which you wouldn't be able to do with a traditional cover which needs to get down and seat, right? Um, so uh, we've seen um, in, in mobile devices, um, tablets, where, where um, this, this has come in handy. We've seen customers use it. So structurized, we get into kind of a different uh, category of materials. Um, and you'll see here, the, the first one we have is Radom Auto. So Laird makes radomes. Uh, we, we have been doing radomes for the automotive industry for, uh, for a long time now. Um, and one of the, the nice benefits that we have is that uh, one, uh, since we do a lot of um, EMI absorbers, we have all the measurement and capabilities to do full checks and um, in terms of your dielectric constant and the, the thicknesses and do a very tight control on your radomes to make sure that they are giving you the, the performance that you're looking for uh, and being nearly invisible to the signal. Um, so we have injection molded capabilities uh, within Laird uh, in, in our sites, uh, both in Asia and Europe. Uh, and we also uh, have injection molded absorbers uh, that we're able to integrate within uh, you know, uh, injection molded radomes that uh, perform an absorber skirt. 
eye. And in the next slide, you'll see um, by adding an absorber as a skirt around your radome, you're able to reduce the back and side lobes significantly. So you see here the, the red line being um, uh, without the skirt and then uh, the black lines being once you add a, a, an absorber skirt around, um, uh, around your antenna. Uh, you, you see here that you know you're getting rid of the, these back lobes and, and uh, you know signal problems that you're going to have uh, by adding an absorber skirt around it. So in in the in the case of uh, automotive radars, you know you see a lot of benefit by a cleaner signal, a better signal by at just adding in a small bit of absorber on the side uh, around your antenna. And so we've seen a lot of customers with really great success uh, using this method. Uh, and uh, you know this is this is uh, a great offering that we can provide. Um, following on to our um, automotive radomes, we have for targeted at the the five G industry. We make low dielectric constant um, sheet uh, radomes, right? So these are um, sheet material uh, structural uh, that um, have a very low dielectric constant. Um, you know, we're, we're talking like 1.5, 1.6 is uh, the dielectric constant for the material, very low loss. Uh, and there's a real benefit and need for this now in the 5G market uh, antennas. And uh, these, we've tested these to hold up to, um, you know, extreme temperatures. Uh, they're impact resistant um, and, and good structural strength um, to, to meet the needs of the, you know, outdoor applications. Um, so right now we have five different, uh, or sorry, three different versions for uh, Radome 5. Uh, we have a Unity TP and LS. Um, next slide here, we kind of go into what, what are the different compositions. Um, Unity is, uh, it's, a, it's a single material, right? Um, and it offer, with the, the nice benefit of it is, is it's a, it's a homogeneous material, right? So as you go and, and go through different directions of the material as, as say you have a, a signal width, right? And you're getting off angle signals going through it. It's seeing the same material throughout. And also it's a very low dielectric constant um, surface at which it's, it's going into. So you, you're, you're, you're getting very good signal penetration into your material um, and, and throughout. Uh, Radome TP, um, this is a thermal formable version uh, of radome five, so you can do uh, kind of uh, curved surfaces if you need. Um, it has a very low dielectric core and uses a thermal plastic on for the the skins, right? Um, so it has the highest uh, strength available of all the uh, of all the options, and um, has very good uh, performance um, at, at, at direct uh, through the material. Uh, radome LS is is very similar to radome TP. It uses a low dielectric core. Um, but in this case, we, 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 we take Unity, make it very thin and use that as a skin uh, onto the, the core. And this gives better, um, better structural uh, than, than Unity, um, but it also gives a very low dielectric constant um, uh, incident service, right? So you're, you're, you know, you're getting very good signal going into the material and then coming out with um, you know, low signal degradation. And so you get better off angle performance uh, as a result. And, and why, you know, why do you need low dielectric constant materials for, for 5G? Well, you know, within 5G, you have, you know, fragmentation where you have different uh, providers having different, um, different frequencies, right? And so traditional radial materials of, made of, you know, just regular plastics with dielectric constants of, you know, 3, 3.54, they, um, they can, if you, if you tune the thickness, you can target it for a certain frequency, right? Uh, but at, as you get in these higher frequencies, off angle performance greatly suffers, right? Because your effective thickness gets longer as you, as you go in the off angles, right? And so higher dielectric constant materials are very susceptible um, uh, to, to degradation of those off angle performance, as well as if you need to span from 28 to 39 gigahertz, um, traditional radomes are, are, are going to work very poorly at, at one of those frequencies, right? With with a low dielectric constant radome, you're able to uh, target a thickness uh, that can then have uh, span both frequencies and give you good performance at both cases, right? So you can tune a material to be able to work for both 28 and 39 gigahertz uh, 
without having to change the configuration or the thickness in order to um, do one or the other. And um, here we have Resorb, which is, which is a new product that we have uh, that, is, that is coming out this year. Uh, the, the industry this comes in is, you know, we do, we do a lot of work in automotive radar uh, with, with different customers. And, um, you know, everybody, you know, as a, autonomous driving is now coming, you know, coming into, um, you know, reality. Uh, you know, you're asking your radar sensors to do more than just, uh, you know, uh, distance finding, right? And so you don't collide into the car in front of you. Now you're, people are looking to do imaging with, with their radar uh, and really get a, a full picture of what's happening around the car, right? And, um, you know, you, much, you need a much clearer signal as a result. And as you can see in the next slide here, when, when your signal is coming out of your radar, it's traditionally going through your bumper. And when it hits that bumper, that's about almost 50% of your signal is reflecting back into the cavity in which your radar is sitting. And now it's bouncing off anything metal uh, and causing a lot of distortion within your signal because it's, it's just bouncing off every surface around there and coming back to your radar and giving you, um, you know, false positive and false negatives. Uh, and it makes your radar much less reliable uh, for, you know, autonomous driving needs. Um, we are able to make an injection molded bracket to which uh, to attach the radar to. Um, and so traditionally people use uh, injection molded plastics for that today. We are able to make a bracket out of an injection molded absorber material with a textured surface, right? Um, so we did an extent, extensive testing to come up with the, the most effective surface to put onto um, that injection molded uh, absorber bracket uh, to stop reflections. So when the, when the reflection hits that surface, it stops dead. Uh, and as you can see here, you know, if you're just using a plastic bracket, you can see here's your, your, you know, your antenna pattern. But what you're actually seeing with the plastic bracket is a lot of noise, a lot of uh, these peaks and valleys uh, all around. And in, perfect, if you, in a perfect world, you would match that blue line uh, exactly, right? Just swapping out your bracket just to be an, uh, an absorber material, injection mode absorber, uh, you get some benefit, but you're still seeing a lot of noise. Um, with our resort bracket, it's 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 we we are five to ten times better uh, than what you get with just an absorber bracket alone. So we've seen in the industry people are now using absorber brackets um, uh, out there, right? Um, but Resorb uh, blows that out of the water. It 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 performs much better. And and as you're more people relying on radars um, for autonomous driving, the you know the safety benefit of uh, eliminating false positives and false negatives and just the debugging and setting up of, um, you know, as these cars go through these obstacle, obstacle courses to, you know, set up their devices, the, the debugging time uh, that we, the feedback we've gotten from um, from the industry is the, the debugging time is greatly reduced. So, um, you know, you're able to get these sensors up running quicker uh, and, and, and shorten your development cycle uh, for these cars as well. Uh, and finally, um, as you as we if you just heard, we've I've been talking a lot about injection molten materials, right? And um, you know, Laird, as, as as I hope everybody's aware, Laird is is very big in the stamped metal business, right? So there's this intersection of uh, injection molded plastics and stamped metals where with over molding, and that is 100% uh, a function that we can do. Um, and so uh, in the past, Laird had shied away uh, from this industry. Uh, but in the in the recent recent couple couple of years, as we become bigger and bigger into um, automotive uh, radomes uh, with injection molding, uh, we we now um, offer injection molding as well. Uh, so um, you know, combining stamped metal or or um, over molding is something that uh, we we do. Very interested in in, in pursuing projects in, in that manner. So um, that is another service that we offer. Finally, Textilize. So as I said uh, earlier, uh, Textilize is based on uh, the smart fabrics uh, that we offer. So what is a smart fabric? Well, we, we have two fabrics that are uh, selectively plated materials um, so that you can, uh, it's a conductive fabric that we can selectively plate so that you can make circuits, uh, designs, any type of pattern that you want. Uh, we offer it in a, um, in a, uh, yeah, non-stretch and a stretchable version. The stretchable version uh, is more expensive, but it is stretchable, it's washable, 
Um, it's uh, highly durable uh, for you know wearable devices. The the non-stretch version um, is very resistant to crinkling and crumpling, uh, and and has very good conductivity. Um, but it's it's not washable, so it's it's more of vices that you know not 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 wearable things that you wouldn't have to uh, to wash, right? And we've had we've had these these uh, these products for for a couple of years now, and um, so the next the next items here are the applications. Um, taking that a step further, um, you know, uh, we're happy to work with you to design in you know these. Uh, these selectively plated conductive fabrics into any any uh, solution that you want, um, but where we've seen great application of this, particularly, is uh, hands-on detection for steering wheels, right? So we make a capacitive sensor uh, that can that is used for hands-on detection um, for for cars, right? So now, also as you know, uh, autonomous driving becomes a thing. You, you know, if you're not quite at the fully autonomous level, you want to keep you want that user to keep his hands on the wheel, right? And uh, we you know the, the the trouble here is that traditional capacitive sensors um, they they don't stretch. It's very hard to wrap this around a steering wheel um, well, right? Or or in, in a good manufacturability manufacturability way, um, so that you can uh, put this on a steering wheel. Because traditionally you're wrapping these with leather, and um, uh, you know you want you want some flexibility and some movement to be able to get a good wrap. And so we we use our um, our stretchable conductive fabrics in order to create a hands-on capacitive sensor that is able to wrap very, very effectively for steering wheels. Uh, and, and that's that's the, the main benefit you're getting there. Uh, it's it's very flexible, it doesn't have any wires in it, and it, it wraps very well um, around steering wheels. Similarly, um, we are able to make heating pads out of selectively plated fabrics. Right. So, um, in uh, in the medical um, area, we've seen heating pads that people need for back pain and whatnot. Um, we we were able to use a selectively plated fabric to create uh, a heating pad for back pain um, that gave very very um, uniform heating. Uh, it's very flexible, very very comfortable for the user to wear. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't have any wires in it. Doesn't have hot spots, and it doesn't. Um, uh, you know, because it's so flexible, because um, it's a fabric, uh, it's 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 a um, much more effective solution than maybe the very stiff, uh, crinkly. Um, you know, uh, every time you get a crease in it, it's going to poke into somebody's kind of pads that are traditionally on the market. And finally, um, using our foams and conductive fabrics, we can make a pressure switch, right? So um, whether this be uh, a mat, if you step on it, it you know, it, it, it completes a circuit and now you can tell that uh, uh, somebody is stepping on the mat or whether it be um, uh, an occupancy switch for a seat, right? So these are made out of, you know, flexible foam materials. So there's no wires or anything running through it. Um, and so if anybody's sitting in the seat, it would be completely, um, you'd have no idea that there's a there was a pressure switch already in there because it's made of foam, basically the same stuff that's already in say your seat or mat or um, any any type of um, uh, device that you need to measure the pressure on, right? And so that's that's kind of all the offerings that we have today. Um, I'll just quickly go through our R&D roadmap. I think we got another uh, minute or two here uh, to go through this. And so I'll just go over what we have on the horizon um, uh, that, that will be released this year. Uh, and so, uh, just just to keep in mind for the future. Um, so I, I already talked about cool, uh, cool Derb HD 500 and Graphite from 3000. Those are, um, you know, we those can be designed in today. Um, they're launching basically right now. Um, so those all the testing reliability is complete and we can uh, we can provide you with samples and you can start designing these in today. Um, for uh, the 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 tech sense with heating, which I talked to the medical heating pad, right? Um, so we, we've, we've finished development on that. Um, so if, if you have a certain use case that you're really looking to use that for, uh, you know, contact today, we, we start working with you on that. Um, we, so wireless charging modules. So we, we have, uh, one of our business does wireless charging modules, um, but in terms of the multifunction world, uh, you know, we do EMI shielding and thermal solutions. 
So uh, particularly in the automotive market, we have, um, that's uh, for one customer is going into mass production uh, right now, uh, but we, we do um, the wireless charging unit with EMI shielding and thermal solutions built in uh, already for, for the automotive market. Um, beyond that, um, right now we're developing, um, uh, you know, one of the problems with wireless charging is, is, is the, the heat that's generated, right? And, you know, you're getting thermal throttling uh, with your devices so that you can't wirelessly charge uh, at an effective rate, you know, you have you have phones out there that say they can do 15 watts, or or or, or I know I know in, in the Asian market there's ones that now advertising 30 watts of wireless charging. The only problem is they can do that for a minute or two, and now they got to th throttle down because they hit a they hit a thermal uh, limit, right? And so we have uh, a new uh, you know patent pending technology that we came up with that disperses that heat without affecting the uh, the wireless charging uh, signal. Right, so you're getting the full throughput of your wireless charging, but the heat is now getting spread out and moved out uh, and, and allowing you to charge at that higher rate for a longer period of time. And so that's on the roadmap for later this year for release. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, Radome 5, um, we, we, the materials are done. Uh, we're just finishing setting up our mass production uh, at our facility in Shenzhen right now. Um, but we, we have production capabilities in, in the U.S. in our Carlsbad facility. So uh, we can make materials, get them out, get them in, design new devices. Uh, and we're really just working on um, cost down right now uh, to set up at our Shenzhen facility. And as I mentioned, Resorb, um, we, we, uh, it's essentially the, the material is finished. We're just doing the final uh, molding trials. Uh, but we have um, samples and everything for to test out the material, uh, try it out, and and uh, so you believe our claims, <laughs> um, and and give it a try. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, just a dispensable version of our Coolzorb uh, is is online for Q4 this year, um, as well as the Coolzorb Ultra, which is the 12 watts per meter K uh, Coolzorb pad uh, that we have um, coming out in Q4. Um, Coolzorb Ultra is available for samples today. Um, so if you want to check out the material, uh, it just won't be full sheets and mass production is, is slated for Q4 this later this year. And then farther on the horizon, we have um, an injection molded version of our Radome 5 uh, um, uh, uh, Radome sheet material that we have. Um, and so kind of uh, an injection, a low dielectric constant injection molded material has kind of been uh, the radome, uh, uh, let's say holy grail or whatever, the, the, the halo uh, material that people have been looking for. And we recently um, were able to achieve um, less than 1.9 DK in injection molded material. Um, and so now we are um, working to get the strength up in that material. Uh, and that's on the horizon for release uh, early next year. And that basically concludes it. I think